There was once a pottery teacher called Joe. One month, he decided to split his class into two groups. Group one had to make a pot every day for 30 days, making it 30 pots in total, and group two had to work on a single pot for the whole 30 days. At the end of the month, Joe judged the quality of the pots. Without exception, every one of the top 10 pots came from group one, the guys that made one pot per day. And actually none came from the group that was focused on perfecting their single pot. Now, in any pursuit, goal or craft, either it being video production, writing, drawing, coding or music, quality comes in as a result of often huge quantities. And if you want to follow pop psychology rules like the 10,000 hours rule, where 10,000 hours of deliberate practice are needed if you want to achieve world class status at basically anything, this doesn't necessarily need to be the case moving forward. There's no specific number tied to it, but the majority of world class performers in any craft put in more hours than the rest of us. And probably when just starting out, there's going to be a gap for a few weeks and months and, you know, even years, and we are all going through this. We know that our craft isn't really that good yet, it's trying to be good, but you know, it isn't. But what is good, what is legit, what is organic, is the thing that made you start thinking about improving your craft in the first place. Which is actually your taste and passion for that particular craft. And by paying attention to your taste for the actual craft, you will probably notice that what you are creating is not good, that you are not there yet that your progeny still needs some trimming. And most of us cannot manage to get past this stage and oftentimes quit. But how can you go past this? How can you go past this block? My idea that you will have something that you want to do and then you try to do it. And you'll fail and you'll try again and you'll fail and you'll try again and you'll fail and you'll try again. So you keep pushing on a specific project, coming up with buggy and sketchy versions of it. You do it quickly, you do it dirty. Speed matters. Now there's one thing I want to keep in mind which is the battle between quality and quantity. Quality and quantity come in with various degrees of attention, focusing on understanding what you are trying to achieve and also focusing on the work itself. There should be a guiding light, a north star. And in the book Deep Work, Carl Newport explains a small piece of Theodore Roosevelt's philosophy of work during his Harvard years. Now, these fragments spent studying didn't usually add up to a large number of total hours, but he would get the most out of them by working only on schoolwork during those periods and doing so with a blistering intensity. So you want to keep attacking the same problem and coming up with different solutions to it while also thinking from first principles whenever you're trying to come up with a new version of the craft. Essentially, the more you'll practice, the more you'll learn and the more knowledgeable you would be. So let's say if you want to start writing, which is, in my opinion, the easiest thing you can do right now, having tremendous benefits overall, such as improving your cognition, your ability to think, process and structure information while also facing your racing thoughts. And you can actually improve your writing by doing it every single day for a few minutes. So do you want to learn how to write? To write one page about anything every single day. Do you want to learn how to cook? Start with something basic, such as an omelette, and try improving and mixing the recipe every single time you're making a new one. Do you want to learn how to play music? Play something small every single day. It is about combining that intense focus, not caring that much about making it perfect with the quality versus quantity phenomena, focusing on quantity first so that you can start producing higher quality work later.